you've been covering this a lot, the ICJ, the uh, the case that South Africa called, you know, on for uh, to accusing Israel of genocide, but there's been more and there's been some developments. Can you kind of fill us in on what's going on with that? What's the latest on that? I mean, it, the ruling when they came out with it was just, okay, hey, you guys have to stop all of these things. Israel hasn't stopped any of it. They've only seemed to ramp it up. Correct. Are there really any consequences that could be, um, I guess, handed over, you know, imposed on Israel? Well, there's going to, there are definitely going to be long-term consequences. Uh, the, the, this, you know, the ICJ ruling um, is setting the stage for, you know, severe diplomatic and potentially economic costs for Israel. Um, the problem is that, you know, it might, it, it may or may not have immediate effect. Um, so after the ruling, which said stop killing, stop gen, you know, don't, you know, no genocidal activity. Uh, Israel immediately cut off, uh, immediately put out this thing smearing UNRWA and the U.S. and other countries cut off funding. So they're basically hammering the main agency uh, that's provide, that's preventing, <laughs> that might mitigate a genocide. Um, uh, and um, now they're threatening Rafah, which is on the southern tip of Gaza, actually, um, with the aim of expelling those people. Uh, not just confining them to a portion of Gaza, but forcing them into Egypt. Um, mm -hmm. So um, uh, South Africa, which has been saying for the last two weeks that Israel is violating the terms of the orders from the International Court of Justice, um, just filed uh, uh, you know, a motion to the court to say, you have to reassess and potentially issue new orders more stringent mm -hmm. orders against Israel. Um, and uh, some country and Nicaragua, meanwhile, a backed up South Africa's case. And it also um, is threatening a, a case against the European country, against Britain, Germany, Canada, and I think the Netherlands, uh, saying that you're complicit in genocide because they're arming mm -hmm. Israel. And also it, they, they couldn't do this to the U.S. because the U.S., has a reservation on Article 9 of the Genocide Convention, which gives the world court power over the convention. The U.S. won't recognize the world court uh, orders. Um, you know, it's part of, you know, the U.S. is sort of saying we're above the law here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, and other countries do have reservations too, but just a handful, but the U.S. is one of them. Um, so uh, the, Nicaragua couldn't do that. Uh, against the United States, but it is effectively putting these European countries and Canada on notice uh, as to their conduct. Um, so, you know, what, what's disappointing is that more, about 30 countries applauded South Africa, but so far Nicaragua is the only one to actually go before the court and back them up. Wow. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Um, I mean, I, in the case of the Arab, I, I think that countries are all scared of confronting the United States and or Israel. Um, hmm. uh, you know, uh, you, you have, you know, as we said, you know, a lot of Arab governments are basically toadies of the United States um, and um, uh, other governments around the world. They, they have their own bilateral relations and concerns and feel ways that they might be threatened by the United States government economically or otherwise. And I, I think that there's a reluctance. I expect that some countries will, you know, uh, Colombia, I would think, um, Bangladesh had said has said it would do so. Jordan said it would, but hasn't. Uh, yeah. And the king just met with Biden, um, so there could be some further insidious back and forth going on there. Um, yeah, it's really bizarre. I mean, it is bizarre that especially the Arab nations aren't stepping up and saying, "Hey, you can't." You know, you can't. You got to stop this. Well, I mean, look at what Netanyahu said. I mean, when Hezbollah is sparring with Israel in the north, uh, Netanyahu is like, you keep this up and we're going to turn Beirut into Gaza. Yeah. Right. So, you know, they're, they're effectively saying one way or the other, uh, you know, anybody who threatens what we're doing will become a target themselves. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the Houthis tried to stop ships to Israel um, and 
the U.S. got into the act and started bombing Yemen and um, undermining the possibility of a peace deal between Yemen and Saudi Arabia. Um, so anybody who stands in the way themselves become a tar- becomes a target. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a mob, basically. It's a very insidious, very powerful um, uh, mob type mentality. Why do you think South Africa had the guts when no one else did? What is it about them? Yeah, I, I think a couple of things. One is, um, I'm sorry, I'm uh, the sun is creeping up on me here uh, <laughs> as, as the days as the day goes on. Uh, so I hope the lighting is OK here. Um, yeah. um, uh, I think, first of all, there's historical ties, uh, the PLO and the ANC, while, while the uh, racist apartheid government in South Africa ruled were close. Um, yeah. And uh, the PLO helped the ANC and Mandela was always very mindful of that and would make speeches to that effect. Um, hmm. He was alive. Uh, and Israel and apartheid South Africa were all were close. They, they called each other apartheid states. Um, Israel helped uh, South Africa get a nuclear bomb. Uh, they co-did a nuclear test. Um, and I think that that's why you've seen, you know, with the whole genocide convention thing in the ICJ, you, you know, the fact that they could invoke the genocide convention was partly because of the brazenness with which Israeli officials spoke. Yeah. Right. They, they, they would say no food, no water. They didn't just do it. They said it. And that's usually the mm-hmm. hardest part of genocide to prove. Uh, the genocidal intent is intent, Correct. right? You have to get the intent, and they've right. certainly shown their intent and, over and over again. Yeah, and I think they showed their intent in part because they've gotten such a free pass for so long that they just don't even feel a need to hide. Uh, well, it, they don't doing. seem to need to. I mean, what is the Biden administration doing about here? We've got these this you know the Biden administration saying, well, and Anthony Blinken always looking really you know, like, oh, gosh, we want a two state solution. We want the Palestinians to be able to stay in Gaza. And then, of course, the Israelis are like, yeah, right, whatever. You know, we're doing what we want to do. Right. And we don't care what you say. Right. And he knows that they're doing what they want to do. So the whole pretense of saying I want a two state solution uh, and and that that's such baloney. I mean, you know, I mean, the provisional government of Palestine has been recognized by over 100 countries. So if they wanted a two state solution, they would have recognized. uh, Right. uh, the provisional, they haven't done so. Most Europeans haven't. Virtually all of Africa, all of Asia, all of Latin America virtually um, have recognized the provisional state. So they don't want a two-state solution in any meaningful sense, I don't believe. Um, They want to pretend that they're not doing what they're doing, uh, which is uh, backing slaughter, continued oppression, ethnic cleansing, uh, and now genocide. Um. And why do you think Nicaragua is willing to step up and and battle the West? I, th- I think Nicaragua. Uh, oh, and we didn't quite quite finish that. South Africa is also part of BRICS, of course. Yeah. Uh, so there's there's the history and the, there's the current dynamic, uh, where they're arguably the the you know the most democratic, the most in a sense Western oriented um, mm-hmm. of the BRICS countries, um, and they they had strong lawyers. There, one of the lawyers uh, I dealt with him somewhat, John Dugard, the one in the pink and orange. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, he left South Africa for some time because he was a an opponent of the apartheid regime, and he's a very sophisticated mm-hmm. lawyer. So I, I think that you know, the, the, just the personalities involved had something to do with it as well. Yeah, um, Nicaragua. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, Nicaragua went before the world court in the 1980s um, against the U.S. for mining their harbors illegally, and they won. Um, uh, so, you know, th- 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 there's a history a history there as well. And Nicaragua has ab- been able to, um, to have an independent, a somewhat independent path, whatever issues they might have. Uh, they've retained some le- more level of independence than a lot of other countries. Hmm. Okay. Which is also probably why they're poor, right? Because uh, the United States, there's a, this punishment that comes from being independent in yeah. the world. Yeah. A lot of punishment. Yeah. I mean, I th- and I think economically it's somewhat, you know, I, th- I believe, aren't they building a canal with China uh, as a rival to the Panama Canal? 
So, you know, I think their connections to China give them some immunity in terms of economic repercussions. Hey, guys, be sure to like, share and subscribe if you like this segment. Now, you might be wondering, this seems like it's part of a bigger show. You're right. It is. The full show is at KimIversonShow.com. So what you're watching is just a clip. And if you want to get the full experience, then you got to go to KimIversonShow.com. The show airs Monday through Friday. 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern at KimIversonShow.com. That is where you can watch the full show. Here, you just get clips. So click on the link down below. Go to the full show. Enjoy. Otherwise, I'll see you next time right here. And be sure, once again, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.